Today, I'd like to tell a story. <laughs> the story is about the power of prayer. Now, I think that um, we all know there's such a concept of, of prayer, but I don't think we, it's appreciated enough. Uh, and I think it's a huge tool that man has <laughs> in his toolbox, in his life, and... Uh, so let me just let me just share a story that happened with me. Um, I forgot about I had forgotten about the story for many years actually, uh, until towards the end of my prison service. So, as you know from my previous episodes, I worked in the prison service for over thirteen years, uh, and that was a very interesting experience. It was an exuberant experience. It was exhilarating. It was also frightening. <laughs> it was a lot of things. Um, but that's, you know, that's what I did for 13 years. And, um, and uh, it was a great, uh, it was a great uh, income. And now I'm living off of the, you know, of, 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 of a, I have a retirement from that service. How did I end up in the prison service? Well, the a friend of mine had called me, but I want to go. A, a friend of mine had called me, and and said, "Hey, you want to work in a prison?" And he had he was a medic at the time. Um, in that same uh, prison compound, and he said they need someone to give some lectures, give a talk. I came in and I gave a couple of these talks, and it worked out that. I like the inmates, and they like me, and I like the staff, and the staff like me. So I ended up part time, and as time went on, I became full time. That's that's a different story for a different time. But how did I get that phone call from my friend? Well, I had been a rabbinic student for uh, like 14 years, 13, 14 years, and before that, I was a college student. <laughs> so that, that's a lot of years studying. Um, so if you combine like my, my, my undergraduate years of the, at the University of Vermont and my, my rabbinic student study years, I'm talking about say uh, uh, like 16 years of study. I was in my uh, mid to late 30s. It's so a plane going overhead. So at one point, it became apparent, I hope the plane doesn't disturb your ability to hear, hear me. At one point, my wife and I realized that I have to start working. We needed an income. And actually, I just also needed something to do. I mean, I really needed to, to be out of the study stage of my life and into the production, productive stage. Um, and I really didn't know where to start. As I say, I had been studying my entire life and until then. And I had a million degrees, undergraduate degrees and advanced degrees. But I didn't know how to start uh, looking for a job. I didn't know how to do that. Um, I remember one day, and I, this, is, this, is really the, this is really what happened. I remember one day I was sitting at a bus stop by myself. It was a kind of a, de not a desolated bus stop, but it was alone. There was nothing, it was, it was in the middle of the entrance to a city, and it was really, not, whatever, it was just a very, like, lonely bus stop. And I remember sitting there by myself, um, and emotions welled up within me. And um, kind of like, it was like a like like a culmination of too many years of like just being concentrated in books and 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 uh, academics and uh, and just the need. I, we had a small family at the time. We needed you know we needed to start moving ahead in livelihood. And I remember I didn't know how to I didn't know where to start looking for a job, and I started to cry. Literally, <laughs> it just welled up within me, and I and I prayed, and it was very spontaneous. It was just a prayer, <laughs> and 
and looked up a guy that said, God, I need a job. I don't know where to look. I don't know what to do. I'm asking you, <laughs> here I got a little bit specific. I said, um, the job that I'd like, I was being a little bit specific. I'd like one, like one which would allow me to continue my writing, my writing books and studying. Not a hard job. <laughs> one which would fit my lifestyle. One which I could do for a limited or, or, or a specific amount of time. And then I could retire. And then I'd have a retirement for the rest of my life. And I'd be, that was it. That was my prayer. <laughs> true story. I remember it very vividly and I, only, and I only reminded myself of the story when I retired from the prison service. So then, after that prayer, and you know, at that prayer I actually felt that my prayers had been heard. You can feel that too. I'm sure you do. And then sometime after that, a few weeks maybe, I don't even remember, the, that's when my friend called me from the uh, prison service and says, hey, you want a job in the prison? So, and then I got the job in the prison, and it was exactly like I asked for. When I enlisted in the prison service, um, because of my rank and because of my position, I was able to continue writing my books. A lot of my books I wrote in my office in the prison service. I had piles of books. All my books were nonfiction. Um, so I was able to finish a lot of my books while I was in the prison service. Uh, it was a set amount of time I needed 13 years and that's what I did to get a retirement and uh, my prayers were answered <laughs> so my friends I've now shared with you a very personal story and I'd like to encourage you in your life whether things are going well or not and they can always be better there's always stuff that could be better don't remember there's a God in the world, and he's here to listen to your prayers. So open your heart and pray. <laughs> That's the fish for today. Until we see you guys next time. Take care.